In this video, we're going to start talking about the process of building proteins from the nucleic acid code. So step one of that process is transcription. I've also made a separate video about part two, uh, which is talking about translation. So uh, before we do that, I just want to make sure we're absolutely clear, since I tend to cover replication uh, very close to the time that I cover transcription and translation, I want to make sure that you can keep those processes separate, because they really are very different processes, and they aren't like sub-steps of each other. So let's make sure we're clear. Replication really only occurs when we want to copy all of the DNA in a cell and make a second copy, really for the purposes of making a new cell eventually. Uh, recall that uh, copying the DNA will occur first before the mitosis or the meiosis process where the DNA is lined up and actually split, or say binary fission in a prokaryote. But um, replication would only occur in a cell that wants to divide. So that's kind of a special case. As we kind of talked about, not all cells divide all the time. So even for cells that aren't dividing, they might still be doing transcription and translation. So in, in sharp contrast, we're not copying all of the DNA in transcription. We are simply just copying a gene region. A gene is just going to be a very small region of code that, that serves as the code for a particular RNA or a protein. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, and we're just copying that. And again, um, it occurs sort of in normal cell activity. There might be plenty of cells in our body that are sort of stuck in what we called G0 of interphase, if you recall. So cells that are just going to stay in interphase, they're not going to replicate their DNA, and they're not going to go through cell division. Maybe an example of that, again, really quick, is a muscle cell. Muscle cells are never doing replication, um, but they're doing plenty of transcription and translation. Um, let's say if I work out really hard and I start building muscle, you can imagine that my biceps would be perhaps uh, uh, transcribing the actin and myosin genes to build more actin and myosin proteins. Okay, so let's talk about transcription and translation. Um, really what we're doing in transcription is we are, again, copying the DNA gene and making an RNA copy. So um, sometimes there's a lot of trans words that we're eventually going to cover and students mix them all up. Sometimes it's also easy to mix up transcription and translation. So for me, the key uh, root word in the process is thinking about script. Um, script means writing, so all we are doing in this process is we are rewriting the nucleic acid code. We're going from one nucleic acid, the very stable DNA master code, to sort of a more unstable temporary copy, RNA. Um, usually we are trying to uh, build messenger RNA, mRNA, um, if we're trying to build a protein. So uh, messenger RNA will then go out of the, of the nucleus, if we're talking about a eukaryote, and it will find a ribosome, and the ribosome will then translate the uh, uh, RNA code and use that code to construct a protein correctly. Um, don't take this slide too literally. The, the RNA doesn't turn into the protein. The, the RNA just teaches the ribosome how to assemble the protein out of amino acids correctly. Um, I'll talk more about translation in video two, um, but just again a little help to think about um, how you might remember this one as the second step. Um, think of it as you're really changing languages here. Um, we're using the metaphor of language translation. You're going from a nucleic acid language, um, maybe the bases A, U, C, and G, and we're really going um, translating it into an amino acid language. We'll see the amino acids later. Those are things like proline, lysine, arginine, that kind of thing. So a very different language, and that's why we're using the metaphor of translation. So um, as I briefly hinted, sometimes DNA genes don't always lead to proteins. Certainly a lot of them do. Proteins are the major workers of cells, and, and proteins do need to be built. Uh, but sometimes we transcribe DNA genes, and those RNA products simply are what we're trying to make. Um, we'll see that the tRNAs and the rRNAs in ribosomes, and something that we'll much later talk about, microRNAs, there really are a lot of different types of RNAs. And when I sort of talk about them later and just sort of assume that they're floating around in the cell, um, I just wanted to cover here first, you know, where did those RNAs come from? They came from transcribing DNA genes, and just the transcript itself is the product that we are trying to make. Okay, but by and large, we're going to be assuming really throughout the rest of this video that we're trying to make a protein eventually.
So um, the other thing I just want to highlight is that sometimes there are additional steps in between. So after transcription in eukaryotes, and sometimes in a special type of prokaryote that we'll talk about later called archaea, um, sometimes additional modifications can occur to the RNA before it goes on to be translated. Um, so I'm going to talk about that in this video. Um, also, oftentimes eukaryotes have additional modifications that occur to the protein after it is built at the ribosome. So sometimes there are post-translational modifications as well. And I'll talk about that more in video two. So let's talk about transcription. Um, here we are. Here is a, a typical chromosome. Um, I don't know why they're showing an X here because you wouldn't be transcribing a gene while it's packed up in a, a sister chromatids form. So that's a little silly. Um, but if we sort of um, you know think, all right, we got a chromosome and there's a, a very particular region of that chromosome maybe that that contains the code for building a a particular protein. So maybe that's right here. So maybe this overall piece right here would be considered the gene. This is what we want to copy. Um, unlike replication, there's just one enzyme involved, thankfully. Um, and that enzyme we're just going to call RNA polymerase. Notice that it's an RNA polymerase because we're building an RNA here. We're not building a DNA copy. So um, what really happens in transcription is that the RNA polymerase needs to know where the gene is that needs to be transcribed. So um, there is actually a little region upstream of the gene, or sort of coming before the gene, that we call the promoter region, um, that has a, a string of DNA code that the, the RNA polymerase protein can bind to. So it sort of finds that promoter, right? right before the gene, and it lands there, and then it sort of knows to copy what immediately follows, or it, it starts copying the gene. Um, I'm going to talk more about promoter access in a future video. Sometimes we don't want RNA polymerase to transcribe a particular gene, so we might block access to that promoter. Um, again, I'll talk about that later. So assuming that the RNA polymerase can land at the promoter region and assuming it can then kind of slide further forward and start copying the, the gene, um, as it turns out, it's only going to copy one of the two strands. So it sort of knows, based upon how the promoter is set up, which strand is the strand that it actually wants to copy. And just like um, DNA polymerase, it's going to add um, RNA nucleotides together. Um, if we're thinking about the RNA itself, it would be going in the 5 to 3 direction. Um, and it's going to hopefully um, have access to free-floating uh, RNA nucleotides that should just be available through nutrition in the, in the uh, cell of the organism. And it's going to add them in the correct um, order. So um, U-uracil always pairs with adenine in the DNA code. Um, adenine always pairs with thymine of DNA. Um, and there's still cytosine and guanine in RNA language. So it's just going to um, go along and add code until there's some kind of termination signal. We're not going to go into what that is in this course, because honestly, I don't know. Um, but the RNA polymerase sort of knows I'm finished transcribing the gene, and it falls off, and it maybe goes to find another gene to transcribe. So um, really all I, uh, just as a brief summary here in case text helps, um, RNA polymerase has to attach to the promoter region. It's the only enzyme we're going to worry about. It can attach, it can untwist the very small gene region all by itself because there isn't that much to copy, and it can add nucle RNA nucleotides in the 5 to 3 direction. Great. So um, what are some modifications that can occur, say, in eukaryotes and perhaps some archaea? Um, the modification I really want to discuss in this course is the splicing out of certain regions of the mRNA and um, gluing the remaining pieces together. Um, so you'll notice here that this um, splicing, um, you can see that certain regions are cut out here. Um, we call the parts that are snipped out of the messenger RNA the introns, and the, then the remaining pieces that stay in there that get glued together right next to each other are called exons. Um, the way I remember which is which is that exons are expressed. Um, so that's the part that stays in and gets um, glued together. There's actually a complex called a spliceosome um, uh, within the nucleus, say, of a eukaryote that actually um, does this job. 
Um, and, and I also just want to emphasize that this is only the, the RNA that gets spliced. Um, the DNA itself does not get spliced. Um, and so you might ask, what the heck is the purpose for having sort of extra code in there that gets cut out? Well, um, perhaps in some cases it might just serve as sort of like a buffer against the effects of mutations. So if um, an intron region kind of gets mutated, it's going to get cut out anyway. So maybe it, it sort of spares the protein from being affected ultimately. Um, there are some other theories that, in, a, in at least a few cases, maybe you can um, leave some introns in um, kind of randomly. And so you can actually have one gene, but you can have multiple different proteins constructed from that gene. Um, if you recall our discussion of antibodies and antigen receptors and how each one of them have to be a different shape on different lymphocyte cells, uh, we think now that that's actually how they accomplish that. They sort of randomly leave certain introns in. Um, your book calls that all alternate uh, RNA splicing. Okay, so um, that's that's kind of the major modification I want to talk about that will lead to what we sometimes refer to as the mature mRNA that's ready to leave. Um, I just kind of wanted to remind you though that, um, or just bring this up, that, that the literal mRNA proper, um, only a small region of it, or only one region of it, actually codes for the protein. So there's plenty of additional RNA coding in the, the rest of the strand that maybe is um, not um, translated. We sometimes call these the untranslated regions. Um, so when a ribosome attaches to the mRNA, as we'll see later, it has to know where to attach. So there's got to be some kind of coding that we're going to call the start codon that kind of indicates here's where the protein coding part starts and stops. Um, there are additional things kind of at the edges of, of mRNA that your book talks about. They talk about the poly A tail and on the other side they call this over here the five prime cap. Um, I'm not particularly concerned about that for this course. Um, those are sort of additional things that are added that just sort of tag it for being ready to leave the nucleus and ready to be translated. Um, there's additional research going on about what the purpose of these untranslated regions might be. Um, in some cases, they might sort of code for how long the messenger RNA stays intact before we finally cut it up. Um, do we only want a few proteins um, to be made from it? Um, or do we want it to linger in the cytoplasm for a long time and be translated over and over and over again? That's something that, that perhaps can be controlled by the cell. All right, so we've talked about transcription. I've tried to be very clear about how transcription and translation are completely different from replication. Um, I talked about how RNA polymerase really is the only player in this process. Um, and we talked briefly about some modifications that can occur prior to translation, especially in eukaryotes.